G'day guys, welcome back to the potty. Today we have a very special video as we are joined by two of Australia cricket young guns, Todd Murphy and Cam McGlure. Firstly, thanks for getting on boys. No, that's on boys. But do you want to get a bit of a backstory themselves? Uh, well, um, yeah, I'm, I'm Todd, I'm um, from Echuga Myanmar. Um, been down in Melbourne now for a couple of years, so uh, grew up in Echuga Myanmar, did all my schooling there, played my junior cricket there, um, then went to Bendigo for a season. And then down to Melbourne where I play St Kilda. So, and then, yeah, here now and hopefully for the next few years. Hey, yeah, boys. Um, Cam McClure here. Um, grew up in the country as well, uh, down in Maryborough. So, a few boys might know, uh, especially the Ballarat fellas. Um, yeah. The likes of Jake Lyman. Yeah. Um, yeah. Down there and um, played footy and, and basketball all the way through and cricket, obviously, and sort of made my, my, my way through and... I was probably a little bit different to Toddy and sort of come into the system a little bit later. Um, in the 90s, that was sort of my first year. Um, had a really good year there and then um, sort of yeah, moved down to Melbourne and um, everything sort of blossomed from there. So Yep. Sure thing. So what got you both into cricket Cricket, and at what age? Um, well, I think I was sort of... I just grew up around cricket. Dad was heavily involved at a local pub um, back home. So every Saturday or even Tuesdays and Thursdays, I was down there at the nets, annoying everyone and um, pestering all the older guys. So I sort of grew up around cricket and um, from as young as I can remember, I loved it and I played it, started at Molly Cricket when I think I was four or five and just continued all the way through. So yeah, I've always loved it and always enjoyed playing. So that's sort of where it come from. Yeah, and I was pretty much pretty similar to Toddy. Um, sort of, you know, growing up in the backyard with your brother, um, having good battles there. And then, um, you know, I was lucky enough, my first game, um, they were a bit short. And I filled in for a game there in my brother's team. And, um, yeah, I think I took a hat-trick in my first game, so that sort of started off for me. Not a bad, um, not a bad <laughs> way to start, but, yeah, that sort of got me into, into cricket and into the pathway, sort of. So, growing up, do you both have any, I guess, favourite memories of playing cricket as such? Um, I suppose, like, growing up in the country, you know, you get, you're pretty close with a lot of your mates that you go to school with and all that sort of stuff. So, it sort of starts from you playing your junior cricket with them and against, I suppose, some guys at school as well, so... That sort of competition and rivalry comes in, and um, yeah, that's sort of good memories I have from playing back home, and that's sort of where your love starts for it. And yeah, yeah, mine was pretty similar. Um, sort of don't have any specific memories. Um, obviously, all of it's been a good journey, but um, yeah, just all the mates that you sort of make all the way through, and um, all the people you sort of get to meet, and um, yeah, friends that you have for life, I suppose. So, what I guess made you both decide to go down the pathway of cricket? Um, yeah, well, I, I played footy as well. Um, yeah. So I played footy all the way through until I was um, 17, and then not that I had a choice or anything like that, I was never that good at footy, but it sort of came to a time where um, I wanted to focus like uh, the majority of my time on cricket. Um, growing up, I think, though, cricket was always number one for me. Even though I did play footy in the winter and cricket in the summer, when I did cross over, I still was always choosing cricket. So um, for me, it was a pretty easy decision and something I was pretty yeah, comfortable making it at sort of that 16, 17 year old age and was pretty confident that was my best sort of pathway into professional sports so I was pretty happy with that decision and it was pretty easy because it wasn't that great footy. Yeah, mine was, um, I sort of started probably in the basketball sector a bit more um, and then obviously loved my cricket early on but I didn't think I was probably good enough to go to the top and um, sort of that pathway wasn't really looking good for me early on. Um, sort of making squads in basketball and then playing a bit of footy as well. Um, sort of had a bit more interest there. And then I think it was my first first Dowling Shield year, I, I made the Central Highlands um, youth pathway side and um, did quite well there and then sort of thought, you know, this is probably my pathway that um, if I work hard enough that I can probably get to there and, and seeing a few blokes from, with like Shorty and stuff in the country sort of making it to the top. Um, yeah, sort of inspired me to, to do well and, and to get better. So, growing up, did you, I guess, admire or look up to anyone, not just in, I guess, the cricketing world, but just in general? Um, I get this question a fair bit. I never had, like, one guy that I absolutely idolised. Obviously, I loved a lot of the, um, I suppose, mid-2000s Australian players like Ricky Ponning, Mike Hussey, um, Shane Warne, a lot of those guys, I suppose, that were my first sort of idols. But I never had one in particular that I absolutely loved, but... Um, I still think those guys sort of set a pretty good foundation for um, Australian cricket and it was something that you sort of looked up to and um, wanted to try and follow them and be a part of it as possible. 
Yeah, my, my, my biggest idol would probably be, um, it's not sort of in the cricket sector as, as such, um, Matthew Darwin Dover, who's, who's from yeah. Maribor, who's like, um, obviously, yeah, he's played in the NBA and he sort of, like, that was pretty similar to me, he sort of got knocked back um, a few times from squads and, and whatnot um, and just worked his ass off and, yeah. and sort of didn't give up. So that sort of gave me the drive there and, um, and then so I suppose in the cricket sector, um, obviously Shane Wan and um, just yeah how he, how he, hard he worked and, and how far he went. Um, and then yeah, Mitch Johnson just with his sheer pace and, and sort of fast bowling, you sort of can't go past him. Um, so he's both played juniors on three different clubs, Totem Alama and Cam at Maribor and Wendaree. What was your experience like as like juniors playing cricket? Um, yeah, it was some of, I suppose, the best memories you can have. Um, sort of a midweek games on a Thursday night and a Friday night. Um, you go from school straight to the games. And, um, yeah, it was always always really enjoyable because you're playing with, as I mentioned before, playing with your close mates and that. And then I suppose coming through the pathway, there's, um, like in local cricket, there might be a bit of pressure on you um, to perform and that sort of stuff. But I always sort of found that pretty enjoyable. And, um, yeah, I love my time playing junior cricket back at Nyma. And, um, yeah, it's something I'm, I think I'll cherish for a while now. Yeah, like Toddy said, it's yeah, it's sort of um, I enjoyed it more than more than anything back in my junior days, um, especially being from the country and then moving down to Ballarat. I thought it was a massive thing back then, and um, you know all the mates that you that you have, and um, I suppose the pressure is not sort of on you as much as as it is as you sort of progress through. So um, yeah, that was always they were always the fun days, and you sort of didn't have too much to worry about other than just yeah playing with your mates and, and having fun. Um, so you both play Premier Cricket. What's the jump like, say, from juniors or like a level below that to Premier Cricket? Yeah, well, I was, um, I sort of thought I had a pretty good, um, not head start as such, but a pretty good transition into Premier Cricket because I was, I played um, A grade cricket since I was sort of 13, 14. So I sort of had that um, that experience of playing against men. Um, and I think the transition from Nyma to Bendigo for that one year I spent there at Sandos Cricket Club, that sort of, um, shaped me, in a, like, put me in a really good um, spot going into Premier Cricket. Um, so yeah, jump that jump. It's, it's still a big jump, and it still takes a while to feel comfortable at the level. But um, yeah, I think having that experience of playing against men from a quite a young age, it sort of it gives you that confidence that yeah, you're, you're up to it and you can compete with them guys. Yeah, like Toddy said, just um, I was pretty similar um, playing from yeah the age of fifteen, playing the senior blokes and, and sort of moving through there, and you sort of learn. Um, most of your stuff with those senior blokes and the experiences they sort of have, um, you sort of pick their brains. And, and mine was probably a little bit different. I think Toddy came down a little bit earlier than me. But, um, yeah, I sort of come in late. And uh, my first year, I sort of had to make my way. And um, not too many people sort of knew who I was. So it was it was quite tough for me. Um, and I, I think I had an injury my first year as well, a shoulder injury. So I um, didn't get to play too much cricket. Played a couple of fourth level games, um, which was tough. And... Um, sort of didn't didn't know where I fitted in the group and um, and then I sort of yeah progressed through and, and got bigger and stronger and then um, yeah, yeah made a main more after the first limb which was a lot more enjoyable and um, yeah I suppose it's it's sort of it's a massive step from I reckon it's a biggest step from twos to to ones um, was probably the biggest step for me and um, yeah and then even the from local to 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 Essendon and um, into the Premier League it's a massive step I think yeah um, so you both played in the under 19 national championships big country like playing at some of the best country, best players in your age group for the country what was that like as an experience and an overall journey yeah absolutely awesome that's probably like going going through the pathway those two weeks you sort of spent away was for me anyway sort of the highlight of the season you, you knew you were get to, um, going to get to go into state and um, yeah, get to play with, I suppose, 12 different guys you don't usually get to play with. So, um, yeah, those two weeks were always really enjoyable. Um, I suppose there's always a bit of added pressure as well with the, the Cricket Australia side that are usually selected at the end of those tournaments. So, um, it was obviously that, that um, you're wanting to perform, but I think that when you didn't put too much pressure on yourself and you just enjoyed it and had fun, um, that's when you seem to play your best cricket. And with the country guys, we all got along really well. And um, I think everyone just, yeah, played, played really well. And, we did quite well in our last year. Um, as I was top age and Cam was bottom age, we, we made it to the final, which is quite rare for a countryside. And we'd struggled the last few years, but um, yeah, last year was quite a successful year, and we went far off of uh, winning a national championship, which would have been pretty special. 
and mine probably wasn't quite as um, uh, well, mine was probably I'll say um, a bit more exciting than, than Toddy's because um, Toddy's obviously made it through the through the ranks earlier on. But um, yeah, it was it was super exciting for me and sort of not having as much expectation behind me. Um, yeah, not so much pressure, I guess. Um, going in was was awesome and. Um, the boys got around me, which was good. Being my first year in the system, and um, yeah, I sort of I had a pretty good, pretty good start to the tournament, and gave me a bit more confidence um, playing at that level. And um, yeah, like Toddy said, it was it was bloody awesome to to see the big country boys in the final. And um, yeah, didn't quite get there in the end, but I think yeah, we were probably yeah probably nearly the best team there, um, which was which was pretty good. And and seeing um, some Victoria sides in the finals was was good. Um, so you both play second eleven from Victoria. What's that like? And do you feel like there's any added pressure to perform at say a state level? Um, yes and no. I think it's it's obviously it's nice recognition from coming from Premier Cricket when you like me and Cam last year both uh, both went on contracts when we got those got the opportunity to play. So it's sort of um, a bit of recognition for the hard work and performances you've been putting in. So the step up it's it's a different it's a different sort of style of cricket. You go from playing two day cricket, uh, which is only ninety six overs. A day into playing for a four-day game, so it's um, it's played quite differently. But it's obviously it's a really nice um, experience to have, and um, something that I think going forward that it's going to hold you in really good stead. Because I suppose every opportunity you get to play longer form cricket um, really helps. Because sometimes going through the pathways and that with a lot of white ball cricket, it can be, it can be quite hard to um, yeah get that exposure to red ball cricket. So um, the two games I played last year, I loved it. Um, it's also a really good. Um, I suppose test to see where you're at it in comparison to other guys, I mean, uh, not only in Victoria but um, around Australia, to so sort of see where you can compare to them and give you up to that sort of challenge. So yeah, no, it was awesome those two games I played last year. Yeah, it was awesome for, for me. To, um, I think I got the call up early on with the T20 stuff, which was pretty exciting and something you know, I sort of didn't expect coming out of the national championships. Um, and yeah, sort of playing at that level was was pretty cool and. Playing with you know the likes of Wilbukowski and um, Sammy Harper and and you know Crone and all the big dogs that are contracted um, was pretty cool for me coming from yeah you know, such a small town and sort of not knowing these blokes. Um, but yeah, the, the jump was was massive for me. I, I feel anyway, especially with my body and stuff. Was um, it was a long season and, and going into those games was yeah was tough. But um, yeah, I sort of found my way and and I thought I did pretty well and. Um, yeah, it was a great experience. Um, so you were both obviously selected to play in the Under-19 World Cup, obviously to represent Australia. What's going through your heads when, I guess, you heard the news that you've been selected? Yeah, well, it was sort of that whole Under-19 tournament, I think all the guys that were there sort of understood that at the back end of that tournament there was going to be a World Cup squad um, selected. So, yeah, it was absolutely awesome when, um, yeah, they, I suppose they got the news they did it. Um, closing ceremony and they sort of read the team out that was going to go overseas so um, yeah to, to get that opportunity um, it's sort of the pinnacle I suppose of the pathway system the under 19 World Cup so um, to get that opportunity to go overseas travel around um, and play a tournament style play was something that sort of opened your eyes up to what professional cricket is like and um, yeah getting that news was yeah, probably the highlight of my junior career. Yeah, well, I was um, I was actually initially the, the emergency, so I didn't get picked early on. Um, so I was yeah a little bit different again there. Um, not getting picked in the in the team on the night was I suppose I didn't really have any expectation to sort of make that team, but um, yeah, I thought I was I was a little bit of a sniff and heard a few little things, but um, yeah, I was actually sitting at home in in Essendon in the apartment, and um, I was actually watching the game. Um, the night before and um, I was watching Toddy and the boys and um, just thinking you know, how good it to be over there um, right now and, and it looks so awesome just the experience you know playing on TV and um, yeah just all that hype and um, yeah fair enough the, the next day I, I got a call from um, Lynchy one of the selectors and, and he said I've got some good and bad news for you um, and I thought oh here we go um, got some bad news he said oh you're not playing in the second 11 game and I was like ah oh, well bugger um, and then yeah obviously said that I'm going to the World Cup which was which was pretty special for me and um, for my family especially um, just the journey I suppose um, all that hard work sort of paid off and, and all the travel and stuff which was really exciting and um, I was over there yeah within two days so yeah. with, the, with the group and um, it 
was sort of good um, playing in those exhibition games before and sort of knowing a few of the boys was, was good and um, yeah, knowing Toddy and stuff, which was good. Um, and yeah, the experience was just unbelievable. Um, I didn't get to play a game, but yeah, just being around the group and, and sort of, yeah, the professionalism that, that was around it. And, you know, you walk off the bus and you've got cameras in your face and um, yeah, it's just crazy seeing that side of it. Yep. So I told you, obviously, you just mentioned you were fortunate enough to play the first game. What was that like? And did you feel if, if there was, I guess, any added pressure on yourself to, I guess, perform and stand out in the, in the game? Um, yeah, it was, it was um, I'll be honest, it was completely different to sort of anything I've um, experienced before in a, in a cricket um, sense. Um, yeah, you, as Cam said, you get to the ground, you, you're walking off the bus, you've got cameras in your face, um, from the, from the get-go and as they sort of follow you around the whole day and um, we we're actually quite lucky we played our first game on, on a weekend so um, there was actually quite a few people at the stadium um, a lot of school kids and um, yeah so that was actually really cool as well and it's a fair bit of noise and a fair bit of energy around so um, I suppose in that regard it sort of I was, I was quite nervous um, going into it I didn't really know what to expect I was sort of thankful we, we had that at first um, so it gave me a little bit of time to I suppose ease into it and then um, yeah, when we got out there in the field and that, we didn't, didn't um, have a great day with the bat, but when we got out there with the ball and that, it was still, it was pretty awesome to be out there and just look around and sort of take it all in and give yourself a chance to, to embrace sort of um, what was going on around you. It was, it was awesome and I didn't really try to put any pressure on myself over there, but um, yeah, I sort of just let it play out and just try to enjoy myself and sort of see what come of that. Yeah. So Cam, you just mentioned um, as you were named emergency for the World Cup, you came into quite an odd instance with uh, Jake Fraser McGurk getting scratched in the face by a monkey. What was that like <laughs> when you heard that? I guess you were coming in. Yeah, well, at first when I when I heard that Jake got scratched by a monkey and was coming home, I actually laughed because um, if anyone was going to do it, was Jake. Yeah, if anyone <laughs> was going to do it. Um, but yeah, it was um, when I got that news. Yeah, that, that I'd be coming home. It was just the best thing ever. Um, yeah. it was straight on the on the blow to mum and dad. Um, and uh, mum and dad were actually in tears, believe it or not. Um, yeah, it was it was pretty awesome for me, and um, yeah, awesome, great experience. When you're over in South Africa for the World Cup, obviously, do you get the much else apart from cricket, or were you just like say in a bubble sort of thing? Cricket, cricket, cricket. Um, yeah, I think it was being over in South Africa. It's not it's not one of the safest countries, so um, we did have a fair few restrictions on us, um, especially when it comes to night time. Like you weren't really allowed out outside when it got dark um we had a security manager over there so every time you went out during the day you had to let him know when you were going how you were getting somewhere um you couldn't travel on your own you sort of had to be with a couple of guys um and then you obviously had to report him when you got back um but in, we also got like, the opportunity to do a couple of things as a group i went to a safari park which was really cool um and all that sort of stuff so although we didn't have the freedom that you might have had going to like a new zealand or an england or something like that or being in australia it was still sort of, um, we still did get to um, do some pretty good things and doing it together as a group was, was also pretty cool because you get to, I suppose, bond with everyone pretty well and get pretty close, so, yeah. I think Toddy said it pretty well there. Um, I remember getting off the bus, actually, um, uh, getting off the plane, sorry, and then getting onto the bus and um, I think it was the first five kilometres I saw a bus roll over and uh, it was on fire, so I thought, shit, what am I in for here? Um, you know, seeing blokes with machetes and stuff in the back of the car um, was was uh, pretty scary at first, but yeah, it's the sort of things you have to get used to. But yeah, yeah, it's definitely different over there. But um, but the whole time we still felt quite safe because we had pretty uh, pretty good things around us and yeah, the whole structure of it was pretty well set up. So um, yeah, um, three your cricket careers, cricket's pretty demanding sport on the body. Have you had any like wear and tears or injuries as such, like major ones or minor ones? Yeah, I think Cam probably has a bit more than me. Um, me being a spinner, it's a bit easier on the body than being a big fast bowler. Um, I've been quite lucky. I haven't had any um, really serious injuries. I've um, had a couple of minor ones. I did, did a minor hand thing last year. Um, I broke a couple of fingers and split a webbing in my hand. Um, at the World Cup, I did like a little bit of a disc problem in my back. But other than that, I haven't really had a, anything that's kept me out for a long period of time. So I've been quite lucky in that sense. And yeah, fingers crossed, nothing comes on up in the next few years. Yeah, I've been, um, I've been actually pretty lucky as well. I've been a fast bowler. You sort of hear folks, especially young folks, um, coming across a lot of injuries early on with stress fractures and, and whatnot because it's so hard on your body. And 
um, yeah, me being sort of the thin sort of bloke and um, quite tall, it's sort of prone to, to get injuries. But um, yeah, I've been pretty lucky and um, I've sort of had, I had a shoulder injury my first year at Essendon, like I said before, uh, which set me back three months, which was probably my biggest setback. Um, and then, yeah, I've had recently, I've just had my, my tonsils out, which is more of an illness, but um, yeah, that set me back a fair way in the pre-season. Um, been ridden for two weeks and been there, ridden, <laughs> tons of dust, tons of the nerves, but so, um, no, I did really well and um, yeah, sort of coming back, I lost seven kilos, so that was, um, yeah, sort of my pre-season gone earlier on, but yeah, sort of building back now, which is which is good, but they're probably my two biggest setbacks and um, early on I sort of had, you know, Achilles trouble with a little bit of a tear, but nothing too, too, um, too bad, yeah. You hear a lot about, like, from the major guys in cricket, like your Steve Smith and Marnus and all that, talking about the minds of cricket, have you got, like, say, a med- not a meditation as such, but, like, when you say you're at the crease of bowling or when you go back to your rump, do you have, like, go through, like, a certain patterns and get your mind back in the game sort of thing? Yeah, I think, um, like, I, I go through processes. Um, I've got that sort of set out from a bowling and from a batting to play a lesser extent, but I think um, cricket, it's a tough game, um, so I think it's really important to have some processes that you trust, um, and no matter sort of the circumstances of the game, whether you're on top, whether you're getting smashed, it's sort of something you can trust in. And um, yeah, so that's that's big for me with processes. And I think it just it calms your emotions down and sort of gets you in the right um, right space, sort of pre ball. And that's quite important, I think. Yeah, for me, it's pretty similar. I've got processes that I go through um, when I'm at my mark and sort of um, you know not not sort of dwelling too much on the ball beforehand, sort of reflecting straight away after that ball, and then sort of getting back to what you're going to bowl next or, or what situation you're in and um, I suppose yeah it's all about mindset and, and being in the right mind frame um, out there because yeah um, it can get pretty brutal and, and pretty there's a lot of pressure um, in the game at different stages so um, yeah just sticking to your process I suppose is probably the best thing and um, yeah just going through those. Do you have any advice for like say younger kids or just kids in general that are aspiring to go down the cricket pathway? Um, yeah, I think it just starts with enjoyment. Um, when you first come in, like when you first come across cricket, you obviously start start playing because you love it and you're playing with your mates and that. So I think um, a big thing for me is don't lose um, sight of why you play the game in the first place. So try not to put too much pressure on yourself when you're going through the grades and that sort of stuff. Obviously, you want to do well, but um, just remember why you first started playing it and, and that sort of stuff. And I think when you're enjoying it, um, I've mentioned it a couple of times, but I know it's big for me. When I'm when I'm having fun, and enjoying what I'm doing, I usually perform better and um, yeah so that's that's been a big one for me and I try to go after that as much as I can sort of when and especially going up the grades you can sort of lose track of it and um, sort of think about performances more and more um, but I think yeah a big one for me is just going back to why I played cricket in the first place and why I love it so much so just have fun with it and whatever happens happens it's all a bonus yeah Toddy couldn't say any better there but um, I'll just add a little bit and um, I suppose you know coming from coming from we both come from the country and um, I suppose all well, everyone's journey is different. Um, people sort of develop at different stages, and um, I was definitely one of those ones that developed later on. So um, I suppose just never giving up, and, and always um, yeah enjoy what you're doing, and um, yeah do it for do it for yourself and, and for your family and your mates. Um, yeah, and I suppose that's how you sort of play your best cricket when you're enjoying it. And um, yeah, so just, just never give up and, and never lose hope, I guess. And, just work your ass off. Yeah, that's a, that's a big one for cricket as well because it, like, it can happen at different stages. Like, um, they talk about batsmen not being the best until they're 27. Man. So you, you've got time with cricket. You're not, you're not sort of lost to it by the time you're 18, 19. So, yeah, persist with it, stick with it, and you never know what can come of it. Thanks for tuning in to this week's episode, guys. And thanks, Cam and Todd, for coming on for a chat and best luck for the upcoming cricket season. Thanks, boys. Thanks for having us. Thanks. 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 Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.